Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Welcome back to Cut the Tape. I'm Rick Alvarez here at the world-famous Frame and Picture Shop, which I own, where we make one-of-a-kind pieces, such as this beautiful original piece of comic art by artist E.J. Sue, framed by me, available for sale. So, despite Lucas, Cut the Tape's back. So, just got back from TFCon, Baltimore, and I thought I would open some of my spoils of war. So, what do we have today? <laughs> well, we got something that's not a Transformer, which I found on the way there, Goliath. Yeah, oh, that's my receipt. Goliath, so uh, Goliath is from the Gargoyles TV show, the Disney show. This is made by NECA. This is going with my He-Man figures. This is going right up top on a Castle Grayskull. We got Goliath. <clears throat> we got Galvatron. It's about goddamn time we got a figure this size of Galvatron. That's not a headmaster, that's not a tank. It's, it's actually, Gal it's literally Galvatron. It's Galvatron. And for the coup de gras, we've got Rung, or as he's known, Mentis, the psychiatrist. My wife's a psychiatrist. Anyway, we'll save Rung for last. Let's start with a Transformer. Let's start with Galvatron. Once again, there is no bio on the box. Great job. No buy on the buy. Who's Galvatron? What does he do? Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Is he the leader of the Decepticons? I don't know. What's his relation to Megatron? He's got an arm cannon. I don't know. There's no bio on the box. I mean, I know who Galvatron is. I assume many of you know who Galvatron is. For those who don't, Galvatron is the son of Megatron from his first marriage. So, you know, I'm skipping over all the details, but. All right, here we go. Woo, nice. One thing that has always bothered me about Hasbro, and, and you know, it's not Hasbro, it's the toy industry outside of Japan. Look at this, look at the size of this toy. Look at how much space is in here. The size of this box compared to the size of this toy, right? This box could have been a lot. Of, this box could have been that, right? No, but we need to waste trees to make this look bigger to fit a shelf at a big box retailer, so that we can make people feel that when they pay their fifty-five bucks or however, however much this was, that they're actually getting their money's worth. Remember when this was like? I'm dating myself here. Remember when this was like? A Beast Wars Mega. And they were like 18 bucks. Alright, so we got a lot of plastic twist ties. Snip, snip, snip. We have released him from his cardboard coffin. Excellent. You know, he's got the battle damage paint on him. I'm not crazy about it. But hey, that is Galvatron. This is this is Galvatron. He's loosey goosey. Loosey goosey. But I am happy he's Galvatron. Now, technically he's a leader class. Is he though? 
It'll do. It'll do. It'll do. He's got some very nice accessories. He's got the Matrix of Leadership on a chain, as seen in the Transformers movie. Does the Matrix come off? It does! Nice! That is a nice detail, and he can wear it right around his neck. Yeah, like that, like so, there he is. There's even a little place for you to plug it in so that it doesn't come off. Um, it doesn't sit quite right when you plug it in, because it's really meant to hang there. Of course, he's got his ion blaster cannon of Sonic Doom. It taps into the power of a, a black sun and then powers the quantum fusion cannon. There he is. I mean, he's missing his blaster, right? I'm sure there's going to be a third party company that prints a classic G1 blaster for Galvatron. You know what? I'll be there for that. I'll be there for that. In the meantime, he does come with blasters. And these blasters, while they're not his G1 blasters, I think it's pretty clever what's been happening. What's what's happened here? Yes, I think it's pretty clever. Awfully clever. It is basically the ship that Galvatron uses in the Transformers movie. And that's basically been turned into a blaster. And you can put this with your Unicron display. It comes with two of them and snap them together like so. You got a big boomer, a BFG. It looks a little weird, him holding it, because all I see is the ship. But hey, this is a great toy. I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm really happy with this. You know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna, this is how happy I am with the toy. I'm gonna put it on display in my shop for today. For today, Galvatron's gonna go right up there. He's gonna go right up there. He'll put his blasters right there. He'll go right up there so my customers can see him. And they'll be like, oh, that's a pretty doll. I have the katana from Star Wars up there. And a lot of people say, that's a weird looking sail ship, sailing vessel. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's Canadian. They're like, oh. And some of them kind of nod their heads. Some of them look confused. It's not something you expect to see in a uh, frame shop. Does he have a card? He does have a card. Hey, oh, we forgot. Oh, Woo, we forgot the card. It's Megatron, Megatron. Megatron and Galvatron underneath, father and son. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. I don't, I don't think there's, I would, I, if there was a whole comic book series written by Nick Roach and James Roberts, James Robert, sorry, that just explored the father-son dynamic between Galvatron and Megatron, I'd, I'd be there for that, along with their, with their dog, Ravaji. So, gargoyles? Gargoyles, why not? Why not? We're, you know what, we're only opening this because I've waited. When did this show come out? When did Gargoyles come out? 1994, does it say on here? I bet you it doesn't, no. But, it's got a little story blurb. It tells you a little bit about the IP. Yes. Oh my God, It's I understand where this figure comes from now and the story behind it. It makes me want to learn more because I read this. Truth be told, this is the first time I've opened a NECA figure. I have a million NECA figures, all those alien predator figures. And this is the first time I've opened one. Oh, look at this. 
plastic tray inside of a plastic tray. Because he's in a, a box, he's, oh, I was gonna say, because he's in a box, he's not held down with a twist tie. I was wrong. It's a little black twist tie around his black belt. That one will need to be cut. Oh, come on. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? The little plastic wraps around the feet. That's okay. Since it is Halloween this weekend, I'm gonna put them on display in the shop. Why not? I'll put them on the, on the front counter. Oh, that's not bueno. Little paint rubbed off. Little paint rubbed off. Mm. We'll have to fix that. You know what? This is this is like a perfect figure to put with my He-Man toys. I'm very happy with this. Let's uh, put his blood. <laughs> let's let's put his tail in. Oh, trying to keep it okay for the kids to watch. He's got a bandy tail. He's got some accessories. He's got a book. He's got a, is it a hot pepper? What, what is that? He, com he comes with a jalapeno. Extra head, extra hands. But this, ooh. Ooh, ooh, Samwise, ooh. These wings, these wings are what make it. Look at that. Oh, yes, yes. Give me all the gargoyles. I'll even take Xanatos. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, baby, this, you know, the reason I never opened any of my NECA figures before was because they reminded me, the early Alien and Predator figures reminded me a lot of McFarlane figures. And if you know a McFarlane figure, this is basically what a McFarlane figure, how it stands up. It doesn't. It doesn't hold its utensils. They all, you know, bend. That was back in the day. The new ones might be different. Technology has changed from 20 years ago. Let's put, let's put him right here for now. Goliath. Oh no, there's some there's some paint rubbed off the forehead already. You know, if it weren't for the paint. I'd give that figure an A minus, but I uh, got some paint rub off on the thigh. And now I notice there's some paint rub off on the head. The thigh, okay, well, you know what? That's easy to fix. The head, mm, not so much. But he's got a second head, which is like an angry face. So instead of Castle Grayskull, I guess we'll put him on Snake Mountain. Colors line up better with Snake Mountain. Not a lot of frame shops have Thor's hammer. That's the real one used in the film. I got it. Chris Evans stole it for me. All right. Rung. Rung, 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 rung. From reformatted. It says 10th anniversary on it. I read that wrong I, and it said 70th anniversary, 10th anniversary. Now, Rung is an interesting character, or as you say, Mentis, because he turns into a key. Spoilers, he turns into a key. He's got a little scooter. That's cool. That's the little, little key mode right there. Let's open them. Hey, sometimes you can't fight the urge 
to sneeze. So you sneeze and it's, you know, I'm not gonna stop it and start all over again because I already opened these, right? So it's not like I can like put them back and then like put a tape, piece of tape over it and then pretend that everything. Anyway, yeah, I sneeze. So what? So what? Oh, remember, always cut towards your enemies, not towards yourself. Knife Training 101. This was a TFCon exclusive. I believe ages three and up. Thank you so much for having one set aside for me. I appreciate it. Oh, goodness gracious me. Goodness gracious me. I don't know if you could see this. Oh, dear God. Rung comes with all the hands. All the hands. This might be a factory error where they just said, hey, what do we do with all these extra hands? Just put them in a bag, sell it to Rick. We, he, he has all the hands. He has a little model starship, little model arc. Uh, as seen in the comics. And he's got all the heads. He's got, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven alternate heads plus the head. That's, he's got eight heads. Dear God, this is, I mean, I guess that makes up for the fact that he's petite as a figure. He also has, you know, his, his scooter here that all takes time and money to mold and to design and everything so i guess with a character that's more petite they they're filling it out with uh, these other things and i'm 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 here for it um let's do it i'm all for that yeah that's a little scooter oh nick roche must be so happy somewhere oh my goodness Oh my goodness. You know, this little guy, this is a special little guy. He comes with so many heads, so many hands. I mean, the possibilities are endless. He's got heads with his glasses on, his glasses off. He's got surprise face. He's got angry face. He's got frowny face. He's got ah face. He's got face. Hands. He's got trigger hands. He's got fists. He's got slap hands. He's got stop hands. He's got this hand. And then he's got this hand. He's got all the hands all the hands and he's he's very petite but in the tradition of mastermind creations he is put together very well the plastic is solid i don't feel like i'm gonna break this thing i feel comfortable dropping it i think it's gonna be fine it's super poseable right this is a great figure they do great they do a, let me tell you something they do great work there does he connect to his little thing? Like, does it have like hole plugs in the feet? That that doesn't seem to be the case. So I guess he just has to hold on to his thing like that and scoot along. Um, that's a very minor complaint. That's a, that's a very minor thing. This is, I mean, just man, this this back of the box gives you an idea of all the different faces and poses that can happen with this character i'm gonna have fun with this i'm gonna have a lot of a lot of fun with this all right Woo! cut the tape is back tape's been cut figure's been open tf Kong was a blast you know it it was nice seeing my friends again uh i think everyone made the decision if they were going to go or not and be safe and everyone was wearing face masks and 
Everyone respected each other's desire to wear a face mask and there were no issues about it. Nobody was the asshole. You expect there to be the, the asshole somewhere. You, you expect the asshole to show up. But nobody was the asshole. And uh, it was a good time. I drove down there by myself, met up with my TFYLP cast members. We didn't get a picture together, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to Photoshop something. But it felt good to be back with friends that you hadn't seen in a few years. So we gotta keep making sure that we're doing what we need to do in order to continue that. So I'm getting my booster shot tomorrow. I hope you, you get yours and I hope you get vaccinated. I'm gonna keep wearing my masks where I feel it's necessary and be nice to each other. Be kind, drink water, water's important. Check out the videos from TFCon and I will see you guys at TFCon in March in Los Angeles. Um, boy, that's going to be a great show. Yeah, certain someone told me certain certain things are going to be happening, and I'm like, oh, isn't that isn't that quite lovely? I'm so happy for you, and uh, I will be there to experience it. So that was cut the tape. Thank you for watching. Be safe. Be kind. Go vote. Peace.